This is Mike Woodburn from Identropy, and today I'd like to walk you through using multi-step authentication using OpenAM's RESTful API. As part of this presentation, I'll walk you through the basic configuration required for OpenAM, the authentication chaining, the setting up cross-origin resource sharing, or CORS, and then I'll take you through my sample application, talking you through the process flow used by the application, and then giving you a demonstration of the application itself. For the purposes of this video, I've set up an instance of OpenAM. And within this instance of OpenAM, I have set up a realm named Demo. This Demo realm has been set up with a authentication configuration for users of Oath Demo. And this Oath Demo authentication chain is set up to use the LDAP module as a required module, followed by the Oath module also as a required module. It is necessary to proceed the OATH module with the LDAP module, as the LDAP entry will contain information that's used in the OATH configuration. Now let's take a look at how the OATH module has been configured. As you can see here, I've set up the OATH module to use a one-time password length of six characters. This aligns with Google Authenticator, which is what I'm using as part of this demonstration. I've set the secret key attribute name to oath secret key, custom attribute, part of an auxiliary class I've created. And I've set an attribute for the last login time attribute of oath last login. This is required for the TOTP algorithm. The custom attribute of oath token counter is used if I were to be using the HOTP algorithm for this module. Prior to using this functionality within our sample application, we're going to need to enable cross-origin resource sharing. This can be done by modifying the deployment descriptor file web.xml in the webinf folder. You'll start by specifying which URL pattern to use for the course filter. In this example, we're exposing cross-origin resource sharing to any endpoint below the JSON folder. Next, you'll want to make changes to the filters that control accepted methods, origins, credentials, headers, host names, and other variables that will determine when cross-origin resource sharing is allowed. Details are covered in the OpenAM documentation, preparing for installation, enabling core support. Before showing you the integration with the RESTful application, I'm now gonna demonstrate this functionality within OpenAM. I'll log in here to the demo realm with my user.0 account. And I will be prompted now for the one-time password. I have this integrated with my Google Authenticator on my phone, so I'll now bring up the passcode and enter it into the screen. As you can see, I'm now successfully authenticated into OpenAM, and I'm able to access the functionality exposed by the default application. Now I'd like to walk you through a sample application developed to showcase this functionality. The purpose of this application is to make a call to the RESTful endpoint, which initiates the authentication process. I will specify the realm that I would like to authenticate into, and OpenAM will respond by providing me with a callback identifying the authentication module being used and the inputs that it requires in order to proceed to any subsequent steps. If this were a real application, you would likely also perform other functionality prior to initiating the authentication process. This would include checking for the presence of a session token, or initiating an authentication chain that would leverage the persistent cookie module, which would allow you to rebuild an existing session. Let's look at the authentication demo in action. I've hit the authenticate endpoint for the realm, and as a response, I've received this auth ID, which is a JOT token that I'll be using to identify myself for subsequent calls in this session. I also receive additional information, such as the stage indicating the module that I'm using, an optional header that I can use to display, and a callbacks object. And this callbacks object displays the expected prompts and responses that need to be passed back to OpenAM in order to process the authentication request. As you can see, this object contains two callbacks, the name callback and password callback. In the name callback, it prompts for the username and has an ID token that expects to be populated with the username to authenticate with. The password callback does the same, but for the password. Whenever I provide these values and the inputs, the application will take them, populate them into the callback object, and then post those back to the authenticate endpoint, including the auth ID and the callback object. 
OpenAM will then respond with the next data response, including the same auth ID, and now identifying the next stage within the authentication chain, in this case, OATH1. This also contains a callback with the expected data to be passed back to the REST endpoint to continue on with the authentication process. In this case here, we see it expects the password callback with the one-time password. I'll now provide my one-time password from my Google Authenticator app, and I will submit this form back to OpenAM to complete the authentication process. Now the authentication process has been completed and OpenAM has returned a token ID, which I can use for identifying my session back to OpenAM. This can now be stored in the application as a cookie or some other persistent storage object, and then passed back to OpenAM on subsequent session validation requests. Thank you for taking the time today to learn more about multi-step authentication via OpenAM's RESTful API. To learn more about Identropy, please visit us at www.identropy.com. Thank you.